I'm Anil Kumar sharing with you an excellent question from one of our subscribers, Varun. Varun, thanks a lot for sharing this question and I hope many of our viewers will understand and appreciate it. The question here is, a cannonball is fired with velocity of 100 meters per second at an angle of theta. At what angle should the cannon aim to hit a target 900 meters away? So here is the situation. So we are assuming that the cannonball has been fired from the ground level at an angle of theta. So it goes kind of like this. And we want to hit a target which is 900 meters away. So, so this is 900 meters away. We are also given that this angle which the cannonball makes is theta. So this is the angle at which it is fired. So this angle is theta for us. We need to find this angle. Now there are a couple of things which will help us to understand and solve this particular question. Now this type of questions could come in many competitive exams where they are testing on more than one skill. So here we are considering systems of equations. We'll have trigonometric equations to solve and then a little bit of physics. So let us say that this angle is theta and we know that the velocity, we will call this as V, which is 100 meters per second. So in that case, the horizontal component of this velocity is going to be V cos theta, right? And the vertical component will be V sine theta. So we'll write this as uh, the horizontal component as v cos theta and v sin theta. Now these two components help us in different ways. The vertical components helps for the cannonball to go up and then come down, right? So it reaches the maximum height and then comes down and that is because of v sin theta. And the component which is helping it to move in this direction is v cos theta, correct? So that is how it really works. Now based on this, we can write two equations. So one of the equation is relating the height. So we can say height is minus 4.9 t square plus the velocity along the vertical path, which is 100 sine theta, all this times t, right? So so that is one equation which some of you must have learned in physics. At times this equation is given along with the equation if uh, the students are of grade 10 and they haven't learned this equation. Now the other equation is relating the horizontal movement. So horizontal distance, let us call this distance x with time. So x with time is given as velocity into time. The velocity in this case is 100 because velocity is 100, 100 cos theta. So it will be 100 cos theta into time t. So these are the two equations to work with. Solving these equations, let me call them 1 and 2, we should be in a position to find the angle theta. Perfect. So I'd like you to pause the video at this stage, think about it, answer the question and then look into my suggestions. Okay. Now, let us consider the first equation. What are we looking at? We want this cannonball to hit the target. That means it should go up and down in this time. So height at time t when it hits the target should be zero, right? So this implies that zero should be equal to minus 4.9 t square plus 100 sine theta times t. So that gives you a condition that 100 sine theta t should be equal to 4.9 t square, right? Or we could actually factor this and we could write this as zero equals two. So if I factor t out, let's say minus t, 
then what do I get? I get 4.9 minus 100 sine theta. 4.9 t basically. Yeah, t is t square, right? So 4.9 t minus 100 sine theta. Now we know at t equals to 0, the cannonball was at the ground. So that helps. And the second part gives you the time when it is going to come back and again hit the ground. So this time is what? That means at this time, 4.9 t should be equal to 100 sine theta, right? So that is this time, right? So from here, you can write that time t is equal to 100 over 4.9 sine theta. So solving the first equation, we get time as 100 divided by 4.9 sine theta. Now let's continue with the second equation. The distance which a cannonball has to travel horizontally is 900. Therefore, 900 should be equal to 100 cos theta times t. So from here, we get the value of t as equal to what? We get 900 divided by 100 cos theta as equal to t. Right? So let's call these equations as our equation number 3 and 4. Now both are the values of t, they should be equal, right? So we need to solve this equation. Now in this equation, we have only theta as an unknown. So that should help us to find the answer, right? So at this stage, you can actually pause the video, answer, and then look into my suggestions. So we know that t is basically equal to 900, when divides into 9, you get 9, divided by cos theta, and that should be equal to 100 divided by 4.9 sine theta, right? Now we can cross multiply. So we get 9 times 4.9. Um, and then we get here divide by 100 equals to sine theta cos theta. Right? So now at this stage, I like to use one trigonometric formula, which is which is two sine theta cos theta equals to sine two theta. So this is, this is the formula which I am going to use now to get the value of theta, right? So two sine theta cos theta is equals to sine two theta, right? So using this formula, what we can do here is we can multiply both sides by 2, right? So what we get here is 2 times 9 times 4.9 divided by 100 equals to 2 sine theta cos theta, which is equals to sine 2 theta, right? So we got a value which is sine just in sine, right? The angle is 2 theta. Now we can find what 2 theta is taking sine inverse on both the sides, right? So that is how we are going to find the solution. So we can write here as sine of sine inverse of 2 times 9 times, I'm just keeping these values as such, over, this is 4.9 over 100, right? Is equal to 2 times theta. So that gives you the answer. So let's use the calculator. We have shift sine inverse 2 times 9 times 4.9 divided by 100 is equal to. So we get 61.88. So we get 61.88 equals to 2 theta and that implies that theta equals to 61.88 divided by 2. So let's divide this by 2 which gives us 30.94 degrees. Correct? So that becomes the solution of the given equation. We can round this to approximately 31 degrees. Is that clear? 
So that is how we can solve such equation. So we get angle as 31 degrees. Now some of you have done the same analysis for projectile motion using the range formula. So you can also use the range formula to solve this question, right? Which is kind of similar approach as I have used in this particular question. I hope that helps. So I hope the solution is absolutely clear. Feel free to write your comment, share your views. Varun, thanks again for sharing this question with me. I hope it helps. Thanks for watching and all the best.